All right, so navigating my way around, been in hotel room all morning, sorting stuff out, doing some uh, research, yeah, and uh, just out and about now, it started raining, es 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 regnet. So I've gone for a coffee, cafe, Schwarz cafe, and ein uh, Zucker, cafe mit Zucker, and the guy is bringing it out to me. I went to this really awesome Japanese shop, Japanese um, uh, Japanese supermarket and I got some aloe vera and um, I got some more glasses because I left mine on plane it's uh, 1 euro or it's 5 euro 1 euro 1 power yeah so for my Scheisse Augen, my sh shit eyes. I've got some glasses now so I can read. I look like a fucking retard, but I'm not bothered. As long as I can see, because other ones were too small, all like that. These ones uh, fill all my eyes. So I can see. Ich sehe nicht. Ich kann sehen now. Ich sehe jetzt. I've been complimented on my German. Just went into a the pound store. So that if I can see Alex tomorrow, I got him like this plane thing that he can make up and throw. There were a cap gun, but I didn't get him that. So he can make this plane and fire it. I got him a, a card and stuff, so it's in English, make a wish. And uh, the woman in there, the young lass, and she's going, Bistol Englander? No, she didn't say do because you shouldn't say farmer. She's like, English? I'm like, yeah. And it goes, I need, no, ish. My Augen is kaput. Glass for Augen. And she went, ah, richtig. Danke schön. Uh, ish, um, pay after, uh, I pay after, come inside, yeah, danke. Got my coffee, the universal language of coffee with cream. Yeah, she goes, um, she goes, ha, Englander. So I had different strengths. I've got these ones, the, the smallest one. And I'm like, a Deutsch mention, a, a German person being nice to an English person, I goes, it's a miracle. It's very nice. I like this. And he start going, we are always nice. German people are always nice. I said, yeah. I say, sprechen uh, English to some people. And he goes, nein, you are in Germany. Deutschland. You sprechen Deutsch in Germany. No, they're not. Yeah, but it's like if we came, if they came to England and they expect us to speak German, they'd be like, we'd be like, fuck off. Go fuck yourself. So yeah, I'm getting by okay. I goes, yeah, check this out. I goes, German people be nice to English. It's awesome. I like it. I goes, haben, no, haben Sie ein um, Geburtstag Karte? Yeah, oh, yeah, and she's like, yeah, ja wohl. Oh, she goes, um, gerne, gerne. Very good. Everyone says, um, I'm, I'm sort of noticing different words that they use up here, like gerne, bitter gerne, gerne. So I go into the Minster, it's down there. I goes, Wo sind die Munster? And she goes, Dort. So down there. And then there's a baccarat there, that's where you get all your bakeries and stuff, but I don't need that stuff. Well, I like it, but I need to be careful. So, I trek myself to some Japanese food in Germany. The Germans and the Japanese, they were allied together in the axis of evil. No, I, don't, I shouldn't ever need to stop bringing up that. I won't do it to the face. I got some pak choy. I got some 
go back here eventually. How shown nuts, chili and lime green nuts. Because them nuts that I got last night were shit. I got this, which is like rice and teriyaki, because they're into all that teriyaki stuff like we are. All these fads in clown world now. Tuna's flesh, so it's the flesh of some animal. A hen, oh, so chicken, hena. I think it's chicken. Hen's flesh, hen's, hen's flesh. Chicken with rice and something green. And then I got some sushi, because when you are in um, Germany, you always buy sushi, don't you? Yeah, I got me some nice sushi. It's not it's not exp it's not cheap over here, man. Tempura rolls. So I got that. I'm eating healthy today. I'm eating like I've gone to Germany to eat like a Japanese person. Yeah. Then I got some coconut nuts. Not coconuts. It's nuts with coconut on. Coated peanuts. I'm eating good today. Been in Germany for 24 hours, no, nearly 24 hours now, and eating one thing, single German thing. I had Turkish peanuts last night, and no, I did actually, I had German breakfast this morning. I had loads of, um, loads of flesh. I ate loads of meat. An animal died for my, for my, for my food. Yeah, unless an animal's died, I don't eat good. So, everything's going pretty good so far. Went into the German court and asked about tomorrow. I said um, to the security guard, I goes, um, you know, what do I need to do tomorrow? It's only around the corner. And he's like, um, come at 9.30 and, you, and um, you do security checks like at the airport, at the um, far, uh, Flughafen, and then go upstairs onto the Zweister floor, onto the second floor, and then, yeah, got my um, shirt sort of ironed pretty well for tomorrow, and um, sorted. Good, good, double good, doppel, doppel gut, doppel guter, the Sean Ryder, the, the German Sean Ryder. German version of Sean Ryder. Good, good, double good. No, gut, gut, doppel gut. Spoke to this homeless guy. He was sat outside near that Japanese shop. Gave him a cig. Because the language of poverty is universal. Gave him a euro as well. I shouldn't really. I, I, my rule is that I shouldn't really give him money, but. I gave him a euro and he was telling me he was born in Corsica like Napoleon Bonaparte so he said he speak Italy Italian and French and he came here in 1969 and he's been here ever since and then he said that he had all these fancy rings on and like uh, tattoos and painted nails so I think you're into like mysticism and stuff like that and he was telling me that the triangles he were like going it's the antenna and he said that this country is controlled by the United States he were into all that stuff I'm into stuff like that Start, started talking about JC started saying about all this stuff about um, that the beaming uh, signals to him and stuff and the antennas down there he said, he said the hold well on he said the antennas down that street if you keep on walking because he spoke uh, he spoke pretty good English loads of people speak English over here.
so just gonna walk around today I'm gonna go down to the Minster now it said that it's uh, the oldest Minster in Germany built in the 11th century um, 11th and then some more work were done in the 13th century so it is as old as York Minster Bonn Minster and it's um, one of the most famous in Europe it said it's uh, um, a really uh, important place it's a basilica which is so it's catholic and um, it's built on the site of two saints who were killed in the in roman times and i've got it written down here did my homework so there were two there was a german uh, sorry there was a roman legion called the um Hold on, see, where's me, uh, from here? There was a Roman legion, and they were ordered to come here to de to destroy, to kill all the Christians in, in Gaul, because this were like clusters. Hold on, let's put it written down here. There was a Roman legion, and they were ordered to come and kill all the Christians and some of the legionnaires were Christian they did and they've been ordered by Maxim Maxi, uh, not Maximus um, hold on down here. yeah it's built on the site of two martyrs Cassius and Florentius who were known as the patrons of Bonn and they were in this Roman legion called the um, the Thebian region, so Thebes in Greece. And they revolted because <clears throat> they were ordered by Maximian to uh, to worship him as a god. And they said, "No, there's only one god, Jesus Christ." He said, "We'll serve you. We'll serve the Romans, but we're not worshiping you like a god. We worship Jesus." And uh, they were both beheaded over there. To make an example, Cassius and Thebius were beheaded over there. And um, it didn't work because, uh, you know, when a lot of these Christian martyrs die, it just makes, it makes them more powerful. That's the idea of martyrdom. And the whole uh, legion revolted and said to Rome, go fuck yourself, we're not doing it and uh, they ended up executing hundreds of them um, making an example of them they executed them all the f uh, miles away from here and the burial sites a few miles away and um, legend has it that they uh, beheaded Cassius and Thebius over here and that's where the minsters built on top of where they were murdered well executed made an example of them the first organ in Germany so the first instrument were put in the Minster in the fir, um, in 1230 so not long after it were built it was built sometime in the 11th century um, and it had the first instrument and that would have been a big deal you know like um, it's hard to appreciate it now but like uh, an organ, no, you know, human beings around here, they, we, we would have never heard an instrument like that. Um, it would cost us like magic, you know, being able to make a, a, an organ like that. And remember at the time, those cathedrals and those minsters would have been the biggest structures that people around here would have ever seen. Poor people lived in houses that wouldn't last long like uh, Wattle and Daub and things like that so if the Minster would have been the most impressive thing that was uh, that was around the biggest thing and the most you know impressive structure all the top ar architecture of the time so Romanesque and Gothic a little bit but it's been changed many times over centuries but it says that they've retained the original character so the size of it it's got five spires 
and the size of it is pretty much the same. It was always big. So I like stuff like that. Obviously there's buildings that are much bigger now in the modern time. But um, I don't think we build bu buildings nearly as impressive nowadays. You know, I think it's hideous, modern architecture, I think it is. And it's not built to last either. Metal and plastic and all these cheap materials, they were built out of stone and they were built to last forever. Still standing today. We won't be able to say that about clown world architecture. It won't be standing in a thousand years. And that's what there is a lot. You know, a mixture between old and new. This looks like quite an old building inside. And remember, um, during the war, this was one of the cities that was um, targeted by RAF. Um, there was a lot of bombing here, so a lot of the um, a lot of the city were levelled. Cologne was nearly levelled completely. So they built it all back up, and they did a really good job of it because they retained the old um, plans and everything, and they built it back up pretty much as it was. <laughs> we blew it all up, and we made them fucking build it back. So yeah, just uh, had a pretty steady morning. What time is it now? Oh. Half past 12, half 11 in UK, so we're an hour in front. Feels a bit weird. So I'm gonna go over and check that Minster out. And there's some pretty cool stuff, like a list of the famous people who are from this place. I was just uh, looking it up as well. It's still kind of classed is the de facto capital because Berlin after 1999 reverted back to being the capital city Berlin was the capital during the war and then in 1949 or 1947 I think it was this became the capital city and uh, a lot of the ministerial like department is still here there are 20 institutions here from the United Nations so this is just as important as Berlin and that's why you, you get a lot of protesters here and things. Um, there are 20 institutes, so all the Institute for Climate Change, the Institute for Human Rights, the Institute for um, um, well, all the globalist agenda things, they're all based, 20 of them are based here for the United Nations. And my ex, her sister, her brother-in-law, Conrad, he was a, a professor at Bonn University and he, his subject was on um, international, um, I called him the professor of peace, he was on international relations when it came to war and things like that. He was very uh, anti-American, he didn't like America at all. And I disagreed then, you know, this is like seven years ago, I sort of disagreed with a lot of things that he said. He was very, very critical of Israel and the United States. But do you know what? The older I've got and the more I've educated myself, I'm sort of coming to that conclusion as well. The United States is, uh, is not a force of good, in my opinion, it's not. So I actually... I disagreed with him then, but I do agree with a lot of the things that he said. He lost his temper with me really bad once, um, because I was support. I was sort of on it, uh, so, sort of saw the Israelis' point of view, and he was like, "No, it's fucking evil what they're doing to the Palestinians." This was seven years ago, because it's evil, Neil, what they're doing. And it's important to get the distinction between you can't just label the, all the Jews the same you can't do that and he goes it's not it's the Zionist movement 
and many of the Jews, when you trace them back, it's to Jonah, the original, what were called by God Israel. So it were only a small sect. There were 12 tribes in that area, and it's only one tribe. And we just sort of use... Um, we just use the term Jew, but um, you're talking about a massive collection of people, and um, it's only one specific group that are really responsible for a lot of the bad stuff. So Netanyahu and that, they're, they're, they descend from this. Um, and it goes back to before the time of Jesus, it does. A lot of the people who Jesus Christ was um, rallying against in the Gospels when he's, when he's calling them out, the Sanhedrin council who executed him, and the Pharisee movement is the same movement that's um, very prominent today. They're doing the same thing, aren't they? Persecuting people, dividing everyone up into different groups. So, the world hasn't really changed much 2,000 years later, it hasn't. So yeah, I just see things a little bit differently. But you've got to be careful what you say nowadays, haven't you? But I'll tell you, the sentiment over here is exactly the same. It's very liberal in this... Uh, in this place is like uh, the Green Party got in charge in 2019. And I, I've noticed this last time I came here was about 20, um, 2018, 2017 and it was just a spotless city, you know really spotless, no litter. The Germans are very very meticulous and they've got like a fetish for um, um, recycling and things like that. They sort of led the way in a lot of ways with a lot of the recycling things in the world and clean energy and all that stuff. And um, I'll be honest about it, I'm, you know, I'm like, wow, I can see how much it's changed. There's a lot of litter and a lot of weeds growing everywhere you can see over there. You know, sort of, you know that was not the case at all. Like weeds growing everywhere. And um, you can understand it in one of the other um, cities, but this is a big, big, important city in Germany. And there's a lot of litter, a lot of lots of homeless people, lots of um, drug problems. I saw a big gang of them last night. It's sad to see, but you see it in a lot of the major cities all across Europe now, a lot of unemployment and things, it's sad, it is, and a lot of German people are very pissed off, very pissed off about it, because they're a very proud country over here, very proud, hard working as well, it's a big deal for someone to be unemployed over here, it's, it's like a, a stigma, a real stigma. We're going through the same problems in our country, aren't we? So yeah, got my uh, my glasses. Um, left my others on the plane. You can see. Let there be light. Yes, yeah, so there's some pretty famous people from here. Obviously, Ludwig van Beethoven was born here, and he was given sort of the keys to the city, so he didn't have to pay when he went into a restaurant. He didn't have to pay for a cup of coffee if they had coffee in those days. Anywhere he went, he would have been let in for free. High society. And his birthplace is down there. I'm going to go try find that. I've been in it before. But you have to pay, I don't know, everything's very expensive over here, it is. It's very expensive. I've noticed how much the prices have gone up. They really have. I got a packet of crisps and a packet of um, nuts last night. No, a packet of nuts and um, a can of, like, um, orange uh, peach juice. You know, like, nearly 10 euros. I'm like, fucking hell.
lot of people are saying is like really high inflation. Because remember, that is the Deutsche Mark. They call it the Euro, but it's the Deutsche Mark, really. It's the most valuable currency in Europe, really, and it's this country's. But um, I've noticed how expensive things are now. How much everything's gone up. So, I'm gonna go try find um, like a re like a supermarket and get some stuff from there. Cause I've got a microwave at home. I get the breakfast on the morning, but I've got to get my own meal through there. Yeah, pretty interesting. There's a guy um, who I've read a little bit about called um, Edward Langsberg. Well, let's find it. He's a, a, like an existentialist Christian philosopher. From uh, He was executed in one of the concentration camps. He was a German because they executed a lot of their own people. They did. They were friends with um, Emmanuel... Um, yeah, Edward... I don't. Yeah, Paul Louis Landsberg, born in 1901. He wrote. Um, I'd read about this book. It was called "The Death of Exper um, the Death of Experience, and the Moral Problem of Suicide." He wrote like a book about that, and um, he was sort of arguing for um, the right of a human being to be able to take his or her own life if they're in a lot of pain because the Catholic doctrine at the time said that you must never do that it's forbidden but he argued against that as a Christian and he wrote a lot of um, he wrote a lot of really interesting stuff like because he was an academic like using the scientific method he was sort of saying that a lot of life's pro he said that the problem of death is the fundamental mystery of life and it's like trying to work out why we die and things like that it's pretty dark stuff but it's interesting and he said that all of the solutions to that mystery and that problem are to be found through experience as opposed to sitting in a classroom or in um you know writing about it intellectually and like academically and things he said no it should be found through experience so like living a life and then saying this is the evidence that I've found and um, looking at it like that so a pretty cool guy like a hands-on guy an, ap an academic who respected empirical evidence you know things that you find out for yourself and using that kind of data he were a really interesting guy he was like in opposition to people like Albert Camus and um, Jean Paul Sartre and Beatrice um, De, Sim De Simone, um, all the sort of um, atheist people, existentialist people. He was arguing against them. And. Um, You know, basically, Jean-Paul Sartre and all, the, all those people whose ideology is just odious, it's just awful. It is, I've looked into it and it's just not for me at all, it's awful, awful. Materialism, atheistic material, scientism and all this, that's just awful. And um, a really interesting story, he uh, got himself in a lot of trouble with the Gestapo. And he, um, his wife got arrested, and he fled to um, he fled first to Spain, and because of the Spanish civil, because he was of Jewish heritage, but he was a Christian, he was a Jewish heritage, um, but he was a Christian, and he fled to uh, Barcelona, and then during the Spanish civil war. The fascists got in charge over there, right? It was the Franco and the fascists. 
And it's like, I, I just feel so sorry for these people, no matter where they went in Europe, there was no escape for them. And his wife got arrested because they, they were, Gestapo were constantly, they were working with the, um, with the Spanish and um, they were being investigated for uh, all this, these ideas that they were spreading. And his wife got arrested and she disappeared. And he, and he, and he sad really, he just traveled from uh, 1940, uh, hold on. He just basically rode around France looking for his wife and he could never find her. No one knew where she was. The Gestapo never would say. Honestly, people used to go missing all the time. It was really evil. It must have been an awful time. And um, it was hidden in uh, France somewhere in a place called Po, where I've been, P-A-U. I went with my ex there. And it was hidden in a psycho institute for psychology he was and they protected all of his works all the manuscripts because if he'd have got captured they would have burnt the whole lot and they protected some of his manuscripts for his books and he was sheltered there and he was given treatment as well because <laughs> fucking traumatized they were looking for his wife he, he loved his wife and he, he could find no no news of her at all and um And eventually he found news of where she was. She was in a concentration camp, Mauthausen, I think it was. And then eventually he gets arrested in 1943. Hold on. He gets arrested by the Gestapo and no one sees him. And then the records after the war show that he died of... Um, he died in April of 1944, so he lasted about eight months in the camp, but the just worked him to death. He was captured in 1943, by, and he was detained as a resistance fighter, fighting against the Nazis in France. And he was sent to um, Oriansburg in the east. And then Mauthausen, he was put there, so he might have even been in the same camp as his wife, but they would have never been allowed to see each other. So he was from the city and he's classed as a local hero. Because he was, a, a, you know, one of those great Germans who stood up against the Nazi party. And some of his work is really influential today, you know, like Christian existentialism. You know, I'm interested in all that stuff. You know, it's going against all the doctrines of the Catholic Church and things, and it's and it, and it interested in, interested in mysticism from the 16th century, and a lot of like Buddhist ideas as well. He was sort of really interested in all that kind of thing. Really great person, a great German born in the city. And then, oh yeah, Hans Beagle, he's the guy who created Haribo. Haribo was invented in this city. <laughs> They've got the biggest Haribo factory in the world here. Yeah, so Bond's famous for Haribo. <laughs> um, it says that uh, he died in 1945, so I wonder what happened to him. Okay, now. Yeah, Hans Bebel, if you're a fan of Haribo, he's from this city. So, yeah, that's all I really had to do today. I just wanted to go do a reconnaissance mission for the, um, for the court and, uh, I, you know, know what I need to do tomorrow at 10 o'clock. And, um, yeah. Yeah, because he was, um, Martin Heidegger, he, uh, that um, Edward Landsberg, he studied under Martin Heidegger and Edmund um, Max Scheller and all those people. I've read some of their stuff. Emmanuel Monnier, the famous um, uh, Christian sort of existentialist, he studied underneath them and he became like their prodigy. So um, in, I've read a bit about it, it's really interesting stuff. Anything that's to do with the meaning of life is interesting, isn't it?
he said it's the root of all of the problems. He goes, psychology, he goes, it's all, it's all about death, fear of death, all the anxiety that we get and stuff like that, depression and anxiety, because if we can come to terms with death, that's what Jesus was saying, don't be afraid of death, don't be afraid of it. And he's sort of going, a lot of these problems that we've got in society, if we can get to the root of it, that's what it is. It's coming to terms with the fact that we're going to die, and it's very mysterious. Why do we die? Good question. And if we can, if a human being can come to terms with that, however you square the circle, you will probably have a better life. You know, I don't do antidepressants anymore. I was on antidepressants, anti-anxiety. I was nervous all the time. Obviously, resorted to alcohol and things like that. Don't need it anymore. And obviously, the big thing is that the things that have helped me, the main thing that's helped me is an abstract concept, isn't it? You know, God is an abstract concept all the material solutions didn't work. And we live in clown world, it's like the idea that every, all the solution to life's problems is a material answer, so science is going to answer all the problems. Didn't work in my life, didn't. Science only helped so far, only helped me so far. Might help other people, but it ain't about other people, is it? So these are really interesting, it's called phenom phenomenology. Phenomenon. <coughs> and anyone who's into all the dark stuff as well, one of the famous doctors from um, the evil anti doctors. Do you know what I mean? People who called themselves doctor, but they were doing the opposite of preserving human life, called Idvad. Edvard Kriegsbach. So he's like one of those guys who was like, he'd class as like the angel of death. You know, these doctors who were really doing awful stuff. He's from this place as well. One of the notorious SS uh, doctors. And he was executed for war crimes. You know, some of them were justice was found but not all of them some of them just went into obscurity a lot of them went to work for the americans but he didn't he was found guilty and uh, executed in 1947 two years after the war you know it took a long time for justice to be served you know they had to do investigations they had to compile a lot of evidence Usually it was eyewitness evidence and things, you know, because a lot of the um, hard evidence was burned. They tried at the best to hide a lot of the evidence. So they had to like get a lot of eyewitnesses and things like that, and they had to find out, are they being accurate or you know, are they lying? It took like two years and then they found him guilty and hung that turd. He was from here. He was uh, in the Mauthausen camp. So. Yeah, I'm gonna have a walk down there now. I think, uh, go check the Munster out, see if it's free. I think you have to pay to get in York Minster now. I think it's 10 quid. Or you can go into one part of it, but one of the old parts you're not allowed in, but I'm not sure over here, I'll go have a look. Yeah, I went, uh, I went, check it out, I goes, awesome, super, I goes, German people, congratulating English, and she went, yeah, always nice to English people, Emma, yeah, she goes, 
Ja, Deutsch ist, ist sehr gut. Gönne. Bitte gönne. Ja, jetzt, I made an, I make an attempt. Ja. Yeah. And then that weird Corsican guy, he's going, I have been here since 1969. I'm like, on the streets. He went, no, and he started to tell me about his life and it sounded like a bit weird. I think he'd done a lot of hardcore drugs. And he started talking about triangles and antennas. And he said that the United States of America is uh, beaming information. He goes, Berlin is not the capital of this country. He goes, the antenna is down the street. And he goes, Washington DC sends signals and it is received in the antenna. He goes, I'm in tune with those bastards. And I go, is that like uh, the reason why your life's turned out the way it is? I've heard all these stories before. I used to do the same thing. It's always someone else's fault. But like I say, the language of despair and giving up is universal in it. So I class them as my brothers. Yeah, check this out. Look at that, beautiful. Yeah, this is a, this is beautiful. Let's see if it's in English. A Christian church. Look at the stonework on that. Oh, look, beautiful. I'll just finish this cigarette. I'll ask him, uh, I don't know, I'll stand back. Yeah, architects is just uh, incredible. Yeah, check that out. Look at that. Just beautiful. Oh, 1692. Look at it, it's just beautiful. See if there's anything here in English. You fucking scum! You fucking destroyed this in the fucking world! Yeah, you started it! Right, Alt. Catholic. Farkirche. Horsekirche. What does that mean? 1876. 1934. An old Catholic church. Getragen durch die Stiftung Namen Jesu Kirche. Yes, you are. There's nothing in English. I'm gonna complain. God, if an American were over here, he'd be kicking off. We're going, we rebuilt our country in scum. Where's all the English translations? Yeah, Americans here just walk around Europe going, yeah. We don't have to speak your language. Oh, look here. 1686 to 1698. 1590. Gegrund den Bonner. Oh, I think I'm fucking hell. I'm paranoid. I keep thinking people's like calling me. I keep expecting that I'm gonna bump into my ex. Or oh, some or oh, my ex's sister. I think I walked past Conrad's house yesterday because they've got divorced now. Uh, I was thinking about going around to see Conrad and <laughs> get some people on my side. No, I won't. See if he's on my side. Yeah, they will. They used to like me. Because I'm a bit paranoid about tomorrow. I'm thinking that they're all going to gang up on me because the sister's going to court as well. I've got Jesus and St. Paul and St. Peter, goody goody two shoes, St. Peter on my side, and Jesus' mum, Mary. No one messes about with her. Yeah? She's got her sister. I've got Jesus and St. Paul. No one pushed St. Paul around. St. Paul were well tough. Yeah, it says St. Paul, when he got his day in court, they were flogging him and beating him and they were going to execute him and because he were a Roman citizen he um, he said you can't kill me he goes you can't kill me because I'm a Roman citizen you can't lay one finger on me without Rome's approval so they petitioned to Rome and they said this guy 
he's saying that he's working for Yeshua and uh, he's trying to, you know, not worship you as a god, you know, the Roman Emperor. He's, a, he's one of those scum. He goes, um, we want to kill him. And the Romans, to be fair to him, they said, leave him alone. Don't lay a finger on him. Bring him over here and you bring your delegation and we'll come to a decision over here. But because Paul, by that point, he was so powerful with Paul. I mean, not wealthy. He wasn't wealthy at all. He was poor. He didn't have, he was fucking skin. But he's politically, well, the Christians at that point, they, they knew how dangerous they were because it's the truth. And uh, legend has it, it's written down in the accounts that Nero was personally present. Nero was a sadist, he was totally, it says in the Gospels, they call him the beast. So 666, the number of the beast that's mentioned in uh, Revelation. A lot of the Christians at that time used to call him the beast. They said that when they say the beast, they're referring to him. They said he's the most disgusting, depraved human being that's ever been in charge. They reckon that he were incestuous. He were incestuous with his mother and his sister. No, that was Caligula. Caligula was even worse, but Nero was brutal. And uh, he used to, you know, throw the Christians to the lions and he used to use them as target practice in gladiator school. They used to burn them alive. They used to tie them up in sacks of aromatic herbs and feed them to pigs and dogs. He used to have them killed for sport every night at his orgies as entertainment. And Paul was obviously considered the boss of all of them. Well, not the boss, but one of the most important ones. And uh, Nero said he wanted to be personally present at Paul's trial. It was a, ma it was a massive show trial. And it says that um, Paul was brought before the court. And he was an old man at that time. He was in his 60s. And you were an old man at 40 then. And it says in the Gospels that he looked tired because there were lots of witnesses there. He looked tired, but his frame was weary, but it was strong. He was broad at the shoulders. He still had the glint in his eyes. His hair was long and gray and his beard was long. He looked tired because everywhere that he went, he was persecuted. Um, but he said he, was, um, he wasn't scared and Nero wanted to personally look him in the eyes and he, and he personally interrogated Paul as well and Paul never backed down he just goes, we're not worshipping you worshipping the one God, Jesus and he's going, say? he's going, is that your final say? and he's like, yeah and uh, Nero said, bring him here and no one's quite sure if it was Nero who personally did it or he ordered some of the guards to do it. They sawed his head off with a blunt knife to make it even slower. And then Nero got his head, laughed at it, or did whatever he did with it. And that's, that was Paul's fate. But who's the man that history remembers as one of the greatest human beings of all time? And um, how do we remember Nero? He had all of his purple regalia on, and all of his jewelry, and all of his finery. But all of that stuff, he had all of the riches of the world, but um, who cares? Don't mean anything when you look back in history, because like Jesus says, I'm the God of history. In history, I will be the king. I'll be the king of history. And uh, who remembers Nero now, other than in the negative? No, because it wasn't just Christians at the time, it was everyone. Everyone hated Nero, he was evil to everyone, to Roman citizens hated him. So uh, who's, uh, who's remembered in history? Paul. And what was Paul defending? The truth. He's like, you're gonna kill me for saying that message about how we're all free. We don't have to be slaves anymore. We can live under you, but we don't have to be like you. Because once again, Paul was saying the same thing that Jesus said. I'm not here to overthrow you. You know, I'm not a revolutionary who just wants to, you know, like today we've got all these revolutionaries. All they're interested in, like Julian Assange and people like that, they just want to get in power. You know, it's like out with the old, in with the new. And, and, and Christians 
Christianity's message is not about that. It's spiritual power. They're not interested in material things. It's a spiritual thing. The Catholic Church might be interested in getting in power, but I don't see what the doctrines of the Catholic Church today have got to do with what Jesus was saying and what Paul was saying. And Paul was saying exactly the same things that Jesus was saying. And it's the same things that I'm going to be saying tomorrow. I'm not trying to get one up on anyone. All I want to do is see my son. And I have a, a right. And Paul was just saying the same thing. You can't stop me going around telling people about this. How we're free. Spiritually we're free. You can lord it over us in the material world. But we're not aiming for that stuff. We don't want what you've got. We're aiming for a higher ground. And Nero didn't like it. Now let's go in here and have a look. Beautiful architecture. Hello, um, can I film? Yeah, yeah, I'll just be quiet. No, uh, not yourself. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Thank uh, you. This is uh, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, the name, name? Uh, the name is Namen Jesukirche. Jesukirche. Jesu. Yes, you. Yes, you. Uh, yes, you are. Uh, the the yeah. name of Jesu. Jesu. Yeah. Ah, Jesus, yeah. my Lord. Yeah. Thank you, my lieber. Like you can take in English? In English. Ah, yeah. From the 1681? Yeah. Yeah, it was first built? It was the first built, 1681. Oh. Yes. It's beautiful. Yeah. Danke schön. designed a certain way so the sound um, resonates a certain way like uh, in Freemasonry and things they, they uh, saved a lot of uh, this it was called secret information about how they used to build these things because it's ancient comes from ancient Greece like the Dorian and Ionian methods that they used of how sound can resonate and uh, the people who built, well, this and ones before it, they were masters of it. They knew how, how sound, the sound of one human voice and the sound of many human voices. Because if one person stands in a certain place and speaks, his voice will be heard over the others. It's, it's, it's genius, it's very clever. That's where the in incense look. Look at that, that is amazing.
I'm not blowing my mind is St. Paul in his time. If you'd have told him then that in a couple of hundred years they're going to be building stuff like this, he wouldn't have believed you. He would never have believed you. Because all those guys were the lowest form of scum on earth. That's what they were classed as. They were all killed. They were all hunted down. And if you'd have told him in a couple of hundred years they're going to be building buildings like this, I don't think he would have believed you. I don't think St. Paul would have believed you. It'd have been like now. Miracle. The sands look. Go find somewhere to sit down. Dankeschön. God bless. Yes, so uh, amazing places like that. Let's find some cover he gave me this. Uh, Yesu Kirsha, Jesus Kirk Church. Yesu. Jesus' mama used to call him Yeshua. And the Yeshua is the name that's uh, first told in the Old Testament. There will be someone called Yeshua. Like the Muslims, they always say that the Injil, which is the Gospel, they always say, if any Muslim ever tells you in the Quran, it says, and it does, it says that Jesus said that a man called Ahmed is going to come in my name and he's going to be the last prophet. No, it doesn't say that. A lot of this stuff, it's very simple what you need to say to them. The claims that they make are false. Jesus never said anything of the sort. But in the Old Testament it does. It says that someone called Yeshua will come. So let's see what this says. Go find uh, some shelter. Well, I'll check it out. This is the uh, the centre. So the town hall. The uh, is it called a Bundestadt? I think it's called. There, look at that beautiful town hall. All these places where you can get all the meat and stuff, kids huh? Oh, look at all the German meats there, look. <laughs> See, I really like it, but it doesn't like me. Processed meat, I really like it, but i just got to be careful. I can't have too much of it. My body's changing. Are oh, the markets on, look? Yeah, the Minster's down there. Well, let's find a way around, check this building out. So look again, this is where I was yesterday. Oh, I don't know. Hotel's down that way. And the Minster's down there. Down there. 
Oh, you can see the spire. There's five spires. There's two of them, I can see that. And this is the famous town hall. The mayor is based here now. Apparently he's here sometimes, the mayor of this city. This is where his office is. Got a beautiful hotel there, the Stern Hotel. And that's the uh, town hall. Again, a lot of it were rebuilt. It had to be rebuilt because of the bomb damage. I don't know if they put bomb this. There's a list in that museum of some of the buildings that got bombed. It didn't get hit as hard as Cologne, but it did get hit because bombing accuracy weren't wasn't as good then as it is now. You know, the Germans invented that carpet bombing. Picasso's famous painting Guernica was the first time that they used the method. Um, the uh, Red Baron, the guy who came up with the doctrine on carpet bombing, blowing up the munitions factories and all the production factories, the, um, the accuracy wasn't very good, so what their doctrine was, just blow the whole fucking city up. And the first, the first city it, that they did it, it was in Guernica in Spain, because the reasons why the um, Luftwaffe, the, the Luftwaffe were basically using the Spanish Civil War as a training exercise for what was to come. They were trying out some of the techniques, working with Franco, and the first city that they did was Guernica, and uh, Pablo Picasso did a famous picture one of his, it's a, one of his uh, works is called Guernica because that was the first part where they used um, carpet bombing. Baron von Richthofen, he's one of the guys, he, I think he got executed as well. He came up with the doc doctrine of carpet bombing. And we did it as well, you know, because once they started doing it, we started doing it as well. You wouldn't just go for one target because you you might miss, so you just level the whole fucking city. And Cologne is about 15 miles away over there, and what they'd be ordered to do is bomb something, and if you had any bombs left, just drop it on the nearest city next to it. It were evil, pure evil, and it were on both sides. Now, I don't see how you can justify an eye for an eye, in fact, because, you know, everyone will get blind. You've got to try and rise above in my opinion. It's all right to accuse them of certain things, but what about if we're doing the same thing? A lot of innocent people got killed, lots of innocent people. Women and children and hospitals got bombed and stuff like that. Maybe sometimes by accident, maybe mostly by accident, but I don't see it as an excuse, not now. Yeah, beautiful building. So, I might be cheeky and just sit here. Read this. With my new glasses. So, yeah, the nice man, he gave me uh, English. The name, Yeshu Kersha. The history. On the 10th of January 1681, a woodcutter in Rheinbach Forest, because this is called the uh, Westphalia or the Ruhr region, like one of the biggest industrial regions. This is the southernmost part of it, Bonn. The Ruhr Valley and things like that. Hold on, a wood, in 1681, a woodcutter in Rheinbach Forest, some 20 kilometres from Bonn, found a piece of beech wood that he believed contained the Christogram. I-H-S, or Greek for Yeshua, Greek for Jesus. Maximilian Heinrich of Bavaria. Ah, that's it right then, so that's the guy who, what they told, they told those two cent uh, they told that legion that they had to worship Maximilian Heinrich. Oh no, this is way before that. No, I got that wrong. The two guys who were killed 
No, because I'm reading one fucking church, aren't I? In the Minster. Forget about it, I got that part wrong. It's just the same name. Maximilian Heinrich of Bavaria, at that time the Ar Archbishop Collector of Cologne, interpreted this as a sign and decided to build a church in Bonn for the Jesuit order, so a, a Jesuit, um, for the Jesuit priests. That single piece of wood became the reason why the church was built and received its name, the Church of the Name of Jesus. Archbishop Maximilian Heinrich laid the church's foundation stone on the 14th of September 1686. He donated 500,000 Reichstahlers for the construction. 50,000 Reichstahlers, so a lot of money. The church was built during a time of political turbulence, the entire construction material was confiscated by the French in 1689 and the building work could not continue until 1692. Archbishop Josef Clemens consecrated the church on the 8th of August 1717, almost 31 years after the first foundation stone was laid, so it took 31 years to finish it. Until 1774 it was used by the Jesuits as a school. The school was immediately opposite, so they used to um, use it as a school to teach kids. From seven, oh, so 1793, during the French Revolution, the soldiers of the French occupation used it as a storage and stable. Oh, fuck. So when French Revolution, it were atheists, weren't they? They used it as a stable to look after their horses. Remember, they, they destroyed a lot of churches because they were atheists. So they used that as a, as a stable. When they left in 1800, the church was a ruin. In 1802, the Catholic Church signed a contract with Napoleon Bonaparte to the effect that the name Yesu Kircher would be ceded to the state, which at that time was French. So this part was classed as France. This was French. This area was part of France. France was later succeeded as the owner of the church by Prussia and the Prussians by the state of North Rhine-Westphalia which is what this is, it's north of the Rhine, Westphalia to which the church still belongs today so yeah the organ, that organ that I, I showed was built in 1958 it was one of the first mechanical organs built by Kleiss in Bonn. So a big mog, uh, organ manufacturer based in this, um, world-renowned organ manufacturer based in this place. It was built after World War II. Under, underneath the church is a crypt that is not open to the public that the Jesuits used as a place of burial. It has 66 tombs. Um... Today it is used as a columbarium, not only for old Catholics, but for people of other denominations and beliefs as well. Also, you can be buried down there if you pay, pay, and it doesn't matter if you're a Catholic or not. In the South Tower are four bells. The smallest from 1535 used to be the fire bell for Bonn. So if there was a fire, the church bell would ring. The other three were cast by the Perna Bell Foundry in Passau in 2011 and are dedicated to the God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. They were rung for the first time on the 29th of February 2012. In the centre are the names of Jesus, his parents Maria and Joseph, his grandparents Anna and Joachim and John the Baptist, who was the guy who, ba the guy who baptised Jesus. The lunatic in the desert. The guy who lived on locusts and honey. And he's the guy who were out in the desert going, The Messiah is coming! And he's going to be a little boy called Yeshua. The prophecy's going to come. And you're also saying other things. who were like going, um, Herod, King Herod, Herod who, killed, who got into power by killing his brother. No, he, he, um, he had a relationship with his brother's wife. Uh, he killed one of his other brothers to get him power and he's the guy 
um, who was going around um, killing all the babies because the three wise men said uh, the sign of the Messiah has come, the star. And he's like, what? And he's like, he's come into this place here. So he's like, and it were a few years after they deceived him. And so he were like, he didn't want to take any chances. So he ordered everyone who was born on a certain date to be killed. But Jesus, Jesus's dad received a dream vision that told him to flee. And they fled to, um, what's the story? They fled to Egypt, did they? They fled. And John the Baptist was a guy who were in the desert. And he were, he were calling out Herod, saying, this guy is a scumbag. And uh, he's, a, he's an adulterer and his wife's evil. And uh, Herod's wife hated John the Baptist because she were like, who the hell does this guy think he is? But all he was was just this guy who lived out in the desert. He, he, he wasn't a political threat. He was just um, a guy who called out bullshit, like all the prophets. You know, he was just telling the truth as it is. And um, she uh, she demanded that his head be brought to... You no, know, he were imprisoned. He were put in prison first. And after he baptised Jesus, he was arrested and put in prison. And while he was in prison, a lot of people were sympathetic to him because he was kind of a legendary character. And people were coming to him in prison and saying, oh, yeah, look, Jesus is doing an amazing job. And he's like, good. He's like going, what, what's he saying? What's he doing? And they're going, well, he's doing this and he's doing that and he's performing miracles. And he's like going, good boy. I was right. J Jesus loved John the Baptist. He was going, he's the greatest uh, human being on earth. He's the greatest on earth, but he's the least in the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> you know, it's all about humility, isn't it? He goes, um, he goes, John the Baptist is the greatest man that's alive today on earth, apart from me. No, he didn't say that. He goes, he's the greatest human being alive. He's the greatest human being born of woman. John the Baptist is going, now, 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 what did I teach you about humility, young man? He's going, yeah, but you're the least in the... No, that's what he told the guys. Um, they came out to find Jesus. And they're going, look, we've got a message for you. Our boss, John the Baptist, is in prison and he wants to know how you're doing and what you're saying. And Jesus is like, don't worry. All's going well. He goes, tell the old man. I'm doing everything that uh, he would like. He'd be proud of me. And he goes, he goes, tell him that, John, you're the greatest man on earth. And, and they're going, Jesus, Yeshua, I'm not sure he'd like that. He's a humble man. He eats locusts and honey. And they, he hardly had any clothes on the last time we saw him in the desert. He was wearing fucking rags like an homeless person. And they were going, he doesn't like, like stuff like that. <laughs> you know, like, uh, he, 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 he likes humility. And he went, well, tell him this. He, no, he said, I ain't finished yet. He goes, he's the greatest man on earth, but he's the least in the kingdom of heaven. In the, and he's like, yeah, he'll like that. So they went back to jail and, re, and the guys there behind bars going, what's he saying, what's he saying? What's he going around preaching? My boy. He's going, yeah, he's saying all this stuff. And he goes, he, he says that you're the greatest human being on earth. And he's like, mm, tut, tut, tut. He goes, yeah, but he also says that you're the least in the kingdom of heaven. He's like, yes, he is the Messiah. And then a few days later, um, they executed him. They were in prison and he never got out. And it was the wife of Herod, you know, cause she had this evil vindictiveness. She were like, you know, Herod could take it. He's like, you know, the old man's in prison now. It doesn't matter, sweetheart. But his wife had this special vindictiveness. Now that's what it is with women, no offense ladies, but it's true, they have to, st they have to get, it's this special kind of vindictiveness. So they sawed his head off and she wanted it on a platter. Bring me his head on a platter. But John the Baptist, like Jesus, he wasn't bothered about shit like that. He just goes, this, this earth is a piece of trash. I'm aiming for the next kingdom, right? So you can saw my head off, you stupid bitch. Right, yes, yeah, sir. More awesome buildings. Don't know what this is called.
das Wetter ist schlecht. Because I just left England to come here. Yeah, Germany is really awesome, Christian country. So this is partly like Catholic, but uh, yeah, I don't know what this building is here. It's a university city, so I don't know if this is part of university campus. I don't know. I'd have to see. Can't translate it. I don't. I've lost my bearings now. Talking about John the Baptist. The guy who ate locusts and honey, he were, on, he were on a diet. And uh, Jesus said one of the most awesome things. He goes, you people, I'm sick of you. He goes, there was a guy living a simple life out in the desert, wearing rags, eating locusts and honey and drinking water. That's all he did. And you criticised him, saying that he was worshipping Satan. And he goes, now you criticise me and I sit at tables with tax collectors drinking their wine and eating and you're, and you're calling me a glutton because you people are never happy. You're criticising him because uh, he fasts all the time. What do you want? A Messiah who comes out and fucking... Uh, eats loads of stuff and drinks loads of wine and stuff like that and sits with tax collectors and sinners you, and then, you, then you're accusing me of that because you people are never going to be satisfied it's the same today isn't it yeah I don't know what this is called I'll go over there and see this is part of university I think an institute that's a museum is it Kennen wir uns schon? A Schlosskirche. A school church. Fuck knows. See if I can ring this bell. Marien, a Glocke means the, uh, the bell. Marien Bell and Josef Glocke. Oh, Mary and Joseph Bell. This is Jesus' mama, and that's Jesus' papa. Yeah, Joseph. And Maria, his mama. 1779, Gegossen von Martin Legras. Max Friedrich von Konigsegg, Rotenfels. Schloss Church, school church, church school. What happened in 1944? I don't know. Right, I'm gonna go find uh, the Minster now. Then maybe what we feel were is to us. Half past one, Hab Eins. Yeah, morning's going pretty, it's afternoon now. Morning's going pretty well. Time's going slow. I ain't even eaten my Japanese food yet. Came all the way to Germany to eat Japanese food. Hold on. Smoking again. Lots of people smoke over here. My body is a temple. It's got incense inside it. And I need to stop smoking. I will. I'm not allowed to smoke in my hotel room. So I did a couple of hours last night. It's good for me, that. Yeah, I'll probably get lost again. Might have to tap into the antenna. The radio wave. He's going, I will show you, it's to do with the triangle in your hand. And I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. The language of the mind virus weirdo people is universal as well. <laughs> the mind virus came over here. 
right, walk down the street, head towards the spire. Yeah, I said to my mum. Okay, I don't know if Gav's watching. I'm a bit paranoid about Ukrainian press gangs because they're getting desperate now. If they're just these assholes driving around in vans, beating you over head with sticks and throwing you in the back of a van, send you over there for cannon fodder. Ain't fucking happening to me. I'll go down fucking kicking and screaming. What's this? Yeah, it's like weird when you get over English Channel start to get a little bit paranoid you know it's like a landlocked country isn't it Ukraine's not that far away <laughs> oh yeah it's down here head towards the uh, the spire yeah I was here yesterday oh you look at the old map Beethoven's story all in German Born in December 1770. That's a bit of a now. And his house, that's where I'm going to go try to find. I've been in it before. Where is his house? Oh, that's born in 1800. So when he was. 30 years old. I don't. Know. His house is here. Hospital. Monsterplatz. The mo Where's the fucking minster? I don't know. I'm not very good at reading maps. Yeah, that's what I'd say to Ukrainian death squads. I go, I can't read a map. I'm shit at using Google Maps. They go, it don't matter. Like I said, Gav, it's terrifying. They're not even giving them live ammunition until last minute. You're trained using blanks. They teach you how to reload your magazine. Um, keep your gun clean and then they drive you to the front lines, open the door, kick you out and then they give you the live ammunition because uh, some of the Ukrainian soldiers have been turning the guns on the officers you won't hear about that on the BBC how evil is that? they're not even trained how to use live ammunition until the last minute and the Russians are getting sick of it now they're just saying it's embarrassing we feel sorry for them it's like fucking shooting sitting ducks. They're all terrified. They're actually feeling sorry for him. I feel sorry for him, I do. Genuinely. Sincerely. It's a tragedy. I think that's why they're all fucking drinking themselves to death over here, because they're all shitting themselves. That they're going to get turned in. Right, so... This is the Munster where I was yesterday. Oh yeah, I saw a pretty amusing episode. I was telling my mum about it. Right, all these synthetic drugs that people are on now. It's hard to know if people are drunk. There were these three Chinese people. There were two. There were an elderly woman, a woman about 50, in her 50s. And there were a young lad in his 20s at airport and we were waiting to get on plane and it was them that were holding us all up they were like going through the bag and they had to show the passport and this young lad were acting really weird they were like acting really strange and they were like pulling all this stuff out of his bag and they were like pulling like shampoo and fruit and vegetables and like packets of sweets and noodles and shit like that and everyone came and all security were there and this woman's going I need to see your passport and he's going what and she's going she's going are you leaving all your stuff there like what are you doing and he and do you know what he did right he fucking put all of the stuff in the bag zipped it up and put it in the bin and everyone were just looking at him going what the fuck 
I was just thinking, because I've got a radar for it now, I'm thinking, are these three pissed out of their heads or something? And he would have stood there like that. And she goes, what are you doing with your... No, the security guy goes, what are you doing with your bag? And he goes, I leave it. And everyone's like, right. And then old woman, they goes, I need your passport. And she went, you have passport. And she goes, I don't have the passport. And she goes, I gave it to you. No, she said it in Chinese, like, said some. And then young guy goes, my mum gave, no, my grandma gave you the passport. You've got it. And honestly, everyone's waiting to get on plane for these three weirdos. And I'm thinking, what the fuck? And security guard, like, took him to one side and he's like, calm down, what's going on here? You need to get, you can't go on the plane without your passport. And she's going, I don't have the passport. She has it. And it's like, whoa. It's the mind virus, I'm telling you. People are going fucking nuts. So, yeah, I don't know if they got let on plane. They were like, whoa. And they just were totally shameless as well. And this young lad, he had his backpack on, like that. And he was just knelt on the floor. And he was unloading all the stuff out of his backpack. They were all over the floor. And everyone was like looking, going, what the fuck's he doing? And then he put it, and then she goes, what are you doing? And then he put it all back in backpack, zipped it up, walked over to this bin and put it in bin and then just walked back and stood there. And she goes, what are you doing with your backpack? And he went, I leave. I go and play now. So, fucking hell. Fucking clown world. This is crazy. You know, I thought I saw some crazy shit in Wakefield. You should come over here. It's fucking nuts. All these synthetic fucking drugs that they're making. Yeah, that's where I was stood yesterday. This is the bank to wall that I'm sure is on road full six. I think Leland Thurman does an ice pick on it. Van Herman does some on it, an ice pick to tie it up or something. Pretty steep banking. Yeah, I don't know if it's open. Five spires. Yeah, I'm always on the hunt. I've got the radar for BMX obstacles. I'd be having some of that gav, yeah. I reckon Neil would do a nice pick on that, maybe a foo for new. Well, I would have done 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Okay, it's a bit tight. Fast plant tail whip, that'll be pretty cool. Because one day, if things work out, and, I get, and I'll come more often, I'll bring my bike. Oh yeah, the, right, so these are the heads of the two guys, Cassius and the other guy. These are the two guys who were beheaded here for saying that they wouldn't worship Maximilian like a god. Yeah, Cassius and, see if it's got their names. Yeah, they were beheaded on this site and they thought that that would be enough. And apparently the whole legion, the Thebian legion, just went, fuck you. You're going to cut out those guys' heads off? You can cut ours off. And they did. <laughs> There's a burial site not far from here. Oh, it might have happened somewhere in France. Because they were told to go into Gaul, which was modern-day France, and kill every single Christian that you see. And they said, nope, we're not doing it. Go fuck yourself. Martin told me to damage some guy coming in on a horse. Lots of fighting, tall chocking. Poor Ukrainian refugees, Russians and Germans once again, and Americans, sorry. English. Monastery school. Beethoven walk. After attending the private school at the Rathaus, run by the teacher Herr Roperts, Ludwig van Beethoven visited the public Latin school run by Saint Cassius Minister. Oh, Minster. So this is called Saint Cassius Minster. One of those guys who was beheaded. The boys' classes for grammar, rhetoric and logic were held in the chapter house on the south side of the cloisters at Bonn. Minster later the young Beethoven also played the Minster organ. Yes, yeah, so this organ in this place was the first organ 
in Germany in 12.30, I said it earlier on in the video. So that must have been an amazing thing. You know, people would have been like, they'd have never heard anything like it. You know, we take it for granted now, but in those times it would have been a big deal. Don't look like I can go in. Uh, Montag bis Freitag, Monday and Friday. Or Montag to Friday. Eight or 12 or. Oh, it's only open at certain times. Ah, look, that's it. Who's that? Saint Martin. Roman Roman horse. A fair. It's on Wikipedia. That's a famous guy riding into the city on a horse. And these stones here, it look these are ancient these because obviously things have been added on and built on and things like that. Yeah, that kind of facade there, that's really old, that they can tell um it's like uh, I don't know, I've got it written down here. Um And you can see the old doors, how small people must have been. Always fascinates me that. They're all fucking midgets. Because caloric intake were way less than it is now. We would have been considered fucking giants. Uh, Yeah, Lombard band, it's called a Lombard band, Lombard, where there's like those in a row like that. It's like a, a freeze, F-R-E-I-Z-E, -E. inspired by Doric and Dorian. Like Doric is, uh, the Doric is the male style and the Ionian is the female style. So it's uh, like just a certain method of uh, building that they copied off the Greeks. They perfected it before the Romans. All gets handed down this knowledge. It's been mostly forgotten in clown world architecture. You know, they, they knew how to build shit and make it fucking last. You know, can we say the same thing? Are the buildings that we built today going to be stood up uh, a thousand years later? How the fuck? Can hardly stand up now. They knew what they were doing, didn't they? They were very clever people. You know, and we always say that, don't we? We're making progress. Progress to what? And the idea is always, ah, oh, they were those people in those times. They were retarded. No, they weren't. They were just interested in other things. I think it's a. I think it's a regression. I really do. I think we've regressed. Yeah, we've got like better healthcare and stuff like that, but morally and stuff it's like fucking hell it's a regression they were still brutal people and it was still hard times but i just think they expected less of the world you know what i mean we all expect too much we're all fucking spoiled oh there's another church there we used to go to uh, um christmas chris tingle or whatever when Alex were a little baby, we used to go to that church down there. Like I say, yesterday when I was walking round, I'm sure I walked past Conrad's house. There, he's got divorced from Maren now, so I was thinking about calling in, but I wasn't sure if it was his house. I can't remember the address. It's looked like a confirmation bias, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not, not going to do that. Because I'm, you know, thinking tomorrow I'm just going to get fucking ganged up on. But I don't think a sister will be like that. I used to get on really well with a sister. And then obviously tomorrow night, meeting Alex, supposedly. But she's not responding to me now. She'll be shitting herself. Because she knows I'm here. I bet she thought that I won't come. 
my mum goes, she'll have a fucking shock when she sees you. Me and Diane, she goes, make sure you dress smart and look at her in eyes and fucking smile at her. Fucking hell, this is well powerful. Aloe vera drink, drink. The lumps of fucking spunk in it. Fucking hell. Next woman, lucky enough to get with me, she's gonna fucking light up like a pinball machine and be full of vitamins. Fucking hell, it's powerful. <laughs> it's like fucking super strength fucking aloe vera. It like knocks your eyes out. So that's the thing. I said that to myself before I came. You know, don't expect too much. And like Leo took me here, he's like, well, it's about in it, Neil. You know, we're not, not going to get really pissed off if, uh, if we don't get if we don't get to see him. I'm like, I know. I've got to mentally say that to myself. I'm doing this for him. In a way, I am doing it for him, but I'm doing it for rewards that may be in the future. It's not all about instant gratification like a lot of things were this time last year. I could only just live in the moment all the time. It was hideous, it was awful, fucking hated it. But I'm not in that place now. I'm trying to do things in my life that are, like I said yesterday, like what Jesus said, planting seeds that might not grow very quickly, but they're not gonna get choked out by thorny weeds and they're not gonna get eaten by birds or kicked around on the stony ground, they're going to take root and they're going to grow in abundance. They're going to be seeds that um, that are worthwhile in the future, not necessarily today, instead of the quick fix. Not everybody wanted to listen to that at the time, did they? Because human nature never changes, I don't think. Everyone wants the quick fix. I used to want a quick fix, but I've had enough living my life like that. I need to think of things longer term now. And if I'm alive for another 20, 30 years, I want to, things to get better and do things now that make things better in the future. So, instead of just thinking about instant gratification. So, nice one, JC. Right, Minster's closed until six o'clock. I might go back in. Might go try find find Beethoven's house. Batteries eating away. I might do another video in a bit. Go to Beethoven's house, the little house. You're like, damn, these people are smart. They're all fucking midgets. The calorie content were well small, but they were brainy as fuck. How many modern day people can say that they're as talented? as Beethoven, writing sophisticated music like that. There are, there are people doing it, but not, not many. How many people can call themselves maestro and, you know, really be maestros, do you know what I mean? There are some, just maybe not in popular culture. So. Yep. Fam Familiarising myself a little bit more now. Because the last time I was here, that's when I was getting pretty bad with drink and uh, I was pissed all the time. I was drunk in church. And it was getting pretty embarrassing, really. So everyone noticed it. My ex's brother, he were a doctor, and he's like, Neil, he's drinking a lot, because he was a teetotaler. He's like, Neil, drinking through the day? But I'm not doing anything like that now, am I? Different person. Because of him. All uh, entrance here, look. 
I always think that's so sad. The, ga the gates are always locked. Oh look, here's the entrance, look. Oh, maybe you can go into this part of it. Five spires. Shoulder bone? Is this often or the. Yeah, often? Danke. Can go in. Let's have a quick look. Oh, 14 euros. Man. 14 euros. Let's see if I can do a sneak look. Yeah, it's a bit cheeky. I don't know. You're only here once, aren't you? Yeah, damn. A bit cheeky. 14 euros. Wonder what Jesus would say about that. Careful. Remember, in those times there were no buildings like this. You were in the underground. People were ashamed to say it. How times have changed. And St. Paul, I wonder what you'd think about stuff like this. Buildings like this. He, he, he wouldn't have believed you. He would not have believed you. I'm not sure whether he would have liked it. I don't know, that's not for me to say. Maybe he would have thought that it's sort of uh, boastful or whatever, I don't know. Right. I still haven't eaten my uh, Japanese food. Might go find somewhere to sit and get something to eat. Oh, H&M, TK Maxx. Clown world in abundance. Yeah, Haribo. Yeah, this is the birthplace of Haribo. This is the Haribo superstar. Like that guy we went to uh, rehab with, Rabsi Nesbitt. And Dr. Matty goes, fucking hell, he's classy. He goes, um, he goes I bet Haribo did catering at his wedding. <laughs> fucking hell, Haribo. I like, I'm partial to a Haribo, it's all right. If I get married one day, I might get Haribo to do catering at my wedding. I won't. Stay classy. Yeah, look, I, I just don't like it, man. H&M, I didn't come all the way to Germany to see H&M. And McDonald's, the pervasive universal reek of McDonald's. I haven't had a sausage and egg McMuffin for a while. No, you can't have one at this time. God's protecting me. Oh no, oh, they've got Aldi, but then it is the birthplace of DM and Aldi, right? Aldi is German, is it not? Mm. Came out way to Germany to buy Japanese food, eat Haribo, and then have a sausage and egg McMuffin. Yeah, man. I wouldn't have it any other way. Oh, so there's a market in there. Right, I don't know what to do now. I get bored easy. And I hate afternoons. I'm getting hungry, getting hungry. I'm gonna go get something to eat. And then go to bed. Oven's house, find his little house, over and out. 